we are going to be looking at the emission and absorption of EM waves by atoms and the production of gravitational waves by celestial systems and the consequences on the structure of atoms and solar systems. We shall start with the atoms and then infer the deductions on solar systems. In 1897, J.J. Thomson discovered the electron while investigating the nature of electricity in a high vacuum cathode ray tube, which was an area being investigated by many scientists at the time. Note that at that time, it was known that materials had a property called charge that had the ability to exert a force on one another. So, scientists could charge metal plates and study the properties of these forces. It was known that charge was of two kinds, positive and negative. The knowledge of the existence of magnetic forces and their ability to interact with charged particles was also available to scientists at the time. In Thomson's experiment, he noticed a red beam traveling from the cathode of the tube towards the anode. When he subjected this beam to an electric field, it deflected towards the positive plates, indicating that this beam was negatively charged. This beam was also affected by a magnetic field. He interpreted the results as evidence of the existence of something smaller than the atom, and he named it the electron, and he later estimated the value of the charge itself. This new particle was called the electron. Since it was known that there are two types of charges, and that the atom was electrically neutral, then atoms had to contain equal numbers of these charges in order for their effects to cancel. But how these charges were arranged inside the atom was a mystery. So, Thomson proposed his plum pudding model of the atom, which was generally accepted for many years before Rutherford. In 1911, Ernest Rutherford came up with a new proposal on the structure of atoms. His research students, Geiger and Marsden, did the alpha scattering experiment where they fired positively charged alpha particles at a theorem of gold foil. Their findings led Rutherford to propose the planetary model of the atom, where he said electrons orbit a positively charged nucleus pretty much as the planets orbit the sun. The problem with this model, according to scientists at the time, was that, according to Maxwell's theory, accelerated charges emit EM waves, which carry away momentum from the charged particle and hence energy. And so, the electrons could not stay in the orbit as they are accelerating. I would like to ask a question in order to establish a fact that we shall then use to analyze solar systems. And the question is, what is acceleration? In terms of magnitude, acceleration is the change in the speed of a particle per unit time. The electron is moving with a constant speed around the nucleus. And therefore, by this definition, the acceleration is zero. Hence, the electron won't lose any energy as it revolves. In terms of vectors, acceleration is defined as the change in the speed of a particle in a particular direction per unit time. Here, the direction of the velocity is constantly changing as the particle moves around the circle. By this, we say that the particle is accelerating and will therefore lose energy according to Maxwell's theory. For example, let the initial velocity be facing upwards like so, when the particle is at this position. 
and at this final point, be facing downwards. If the particle is traveling at a constant speed, v, the acceleration is given as v in the sense j minus v in the sense minus j divided by time. This gives 2v over t in the same sense j. The magnitude of the acceleration is therefore 2v on t. So the particle is accelerating. This result is true no matter the coordinate system you use. I think for that statement, we can both agree. But is this true for all reference frames? We will find out in a moment. But first, I want to draw your attention to something. If truly a particle going round a circle is accelerating, which means the electron going round the nucleus is accelerating, then planets going around the sun are also accelerating. General relativity tells us that any accelerating mass loses energy in the form of gravitational waves. This means that the planets should also lose energy and spiral into their star just like it is supposed that electrons will lose energy and spiral into the nucleus. But we see that that doesn't happen to planets, so why should we think that it happens to electrons? If this were to be the case, that the planets will lose energy, then we will need a quantum mechanical model of the solar system as well. So do we? Or is general relativity just wrong? We know that general relativity is correct in the prediction of GM waves, so it can't be wrong. However, I have developed a quantum mechanical model for the solar system, and all the videos on that are under the quantum gravity playlist, so you can check it out later. I have derived there a Schrodinger equation using the cosmic Planck's constant g, and the Schrodinger equation is the same as that for atoms, with g taking the place of h. Solutions to this equation, like in the case of the atom, will introduce indeterminism in the cosmos, as is the case in quantum mechanics. But we know that the cosmos is deterministic, so the quantum formalism has to be wrong. And if it is wrong for the cosmos, then it has to be wrong for atoms as well, because it is the same equation. So our only hope is general relativity. But it is the same general relativity that suggests that the rotating planets will lose energy, which is what led us to start thinking about a quantum model for the cosmos in the first place. So the main problem here is really about the question of acceleration that we have described earlier. It was acceleration that suggested that the planetary model of the atom is wrong. And it is still acceleration that is presenting us with the same problem for solar systems and planets. Some people might say that the acceleration of the planets is uniform and cannot produce gravitational waves because general relativity requires known uniform acceleration to produce GM waves. But if that is true, does that not mean that the acceleration of electrons is also uniform because it is the same kind of motion and therefore will not emit radiations, which is in fact what experiments tell us. The evidence we have for the fact that electrons in orbits do not emit EM waves is of equal magnitude to that which says planets in orbit do not emit GM waves. So the two have to be accepted because of the nature of the evidence, which is in fact an axiom. So if we are willing to discard these for atoms, 
and introduce the quantum theory, then we should do the same for solar systems and introduce a quantum theory. But we already know what will happen if we do that, don't we? Let's address the elephant in the room, the acceleration problem, to resolve this issue once and for all. It's time to answer our question of whether or not a body moving round a circular path is accelerating in all reference frames. Because this has to be the case according to special relativity, where Einstein said all physics laws must remain the same in all inertia frames. Our first analysis was done from the reference frame of the nucleus or the center object, and the result was an acceleration pointing towards the center. Now, let's look at the situation from the frame of reference of the orbiting object. We can define our autonomous coordinate system as follows with the particle at the origin of this coordinate system. According to this coordinate system, the velocity is always pointing in the theta direction, and since the speed is constant, then the velocity is also constant. This means that the acceleration is given as follows, which is equal to zero. This means that the acceleration in the reference frame of the center object should also be zero, which fixes our problem of the particle losing energy. The Earth is an inertial reference frame because we use a coordinate system on Earth to map out the positions of all the objects in space. And as we have observed, all physics principles hold true on Earth which is consistent with Einstein's postulate. So, our approach of using a coordinate system centered on the rotating body is correct, and hence the result of zero acceleration. As I have said, this result has to be true for all other reference frames, including the one of the center object. So how can we fix this? Consider an elastic material attached to a rigid wall on one end and to a mass little m on the other end, all on a smooth surface. At this point, there is no net force acting on the system. If you pull the mass this way, you are basically applying a force in that direction and this force acts through the string on the wall trying to pull the wall as well. So, the wall applies a reaction force according to Newton's third law of motion on the string which in the same way will be felt by the mass. This spring is under tension and will extend accordingly. This is why it is said that the tension on a spring acts both ways. So we see that the normal reaction force exerted by the wall balances with the force you applied to pull the spring. So the resultant force on this system is zero, hence no acceleration. So we say this system is in static equilibrium. If you now remove your hand so that the mass is released, the pull force you are applying no longer acts, and just at the instant where you release the grip, the normal reaction force becomes the net force acting on the mass, which causes it to accelerate accordingly. And since this material is a spring, the mass will oscillate simple harmonically. If the wall was not there, there will be no normal reaction and hence the system will not hold. In the case when you are still holding the mass, as described earlier, you could rotate the mass in a horizontal circular path, 
and that is circular motion. You must keep holding the mass in order to perform the circular motion, because if you release the mass, there will be a net force, as we have seen, towards the wall, which in this case is the center of the circle. This is the same situation when an object is performing circular motion on its own, like when you swirl a string with a mass on one end. The force that balances the centripetal force is called the centrifugal force, and without this force, the body will accelerate towards the center. This force must be present in order for circular motion to occur, otherwise, the rotating body will just move straight to the center object as we have established. This is the force that causes the Earth to be shaped like an egg, because the centripetal and the centrifugal forces are pulling the Earth on both sides of the equator with equal magnitude. This is evidence of the existence of centrifugal forces in solar systems. So, what is this telling us, in essence? It is telling us that the net radial force on a body performing circular motion is zero. According to Newton's second law F equal ma, the net radial acceleration is equal to zero. This is because there is an acceleration towards the center and an acceleration of the same magnitude away from the center, both acting radially. These are both as a result of the centripetal and the centrifugal force, and therefore the net radial acceleration is zero because the net radial force is zero. So this means that even for an observer in the reference frame of the center object, the acceleration of the rotating object is zero just like we had for the moving frame. I think this settles it. So we can now state that an object moving around a circular path at constant speed is not accelerating. As a result, orbiting electrons and planets will not lose energy and spiral down to the center. Now that we have established that electrons and planets do not give off energy as they move around their orbits, it means that they do not produce any radiations as they move. This explains why a solar system is stable and also why atoms are stable. In the light of this analysis, it is therefore safe to conclude that the true nature of an atom is like the structure of a solar system, and that solar systems and atoms are equivalent. If charged particles moving in a circular path were accelerating and emitting radiations, then passing electric current through a circular loop of wire would cause the wire to glow or emit other forms of EM radiations. These we clearly do not observe which means that the charges do not accelerate as we have established already, confirming further what we have concluded. Also, we have to conclude that gravitomagnetic waves and electromagnetic waves are identical in all respect, and this is what will help us explain why light was a good element to use in the LIGO detector to detect gravitational waves. Continue to part D to see how, and also how to show that charge curves space-time just like mass.